Hello children, nice to meet you again once again for the ninth history session. Uh, today we are going to learn about the Mauryan Empire, okay, one of the greatest and the biggest empire, the empire which gave us one of the wonderful leader, the Ashoka. Okay, so let's go into the lesson. Uh, as for the syllabus, we'll be stressing on uh, the sources. Uh, under the sources we have Arthashastra, Indica. They both are literary sources. Then we have Ashokan Edicts and Sanchi Stupa. They are archaeological sources. So under the syllabus ICAC 9th standard we have sources as four. The first two Arthashastra and Indica. They are literary sources that means they are in the form of books. Okay, and Ashokan Edicts and San San Sanchi Stupa are both archaeological evidences. That means we can see them physically. Okay, then the other part of the syllabus is it talks, we have to learn about the political history and administration of two great kings, Chandragupta Maurya and Ashoka. Okay, so what was the political history during that time? And what was the administration during Chandragupta uh, reigning time and Ashoka's reigning time and finally Ashoka's Dharma okay so let's move on to the first one the Mauryan Empire you can just see the map over here which is like Indian subcontinent and you can see the border of Himalaya here then Pakistan and then it goes further towards the west so this entire area Okay, which you can see in brown color, dark brown color, uh, is a Mauryan Empire or was in Mauryan Empire. Okay, so the Mauryan Empire was founded in which century? 4th century BC by Chandragupta Maurya. So the founder of the Mauryan Empire was Chandragupta Maurya. He organized powerful army and laid the foundation of a vast empire. So it's not easy to have a, such a big an empire. Okay, so this great man Chandragupta Maurya who had a lot of wars and battles and he established this vast empire and which we call it or which we learn it now as Maurya Empire. Okay, okay, then moving on to sources as we discussed earlier in the slide. Sources, literary sources and archaeological sources. Under the literary sources, we have Arthashastra of Kautilya. Okay, Kautilya um, was with Chandragupta Maurya and he was a brainy man, okay, who wrote Arthashastra. So, it is by Kautilya. Kautilya is also known as Chandra, Vishnu Gupta or Chanakya. Kautilya is also known as Vishnu Gupta or Chanakya. He was the chief advisor of Chandragupta Maurya, okay, chief advisor of Chandragupta Maurya and this particular book he wrote in Sanskrit language, which language? Sanskrit language, the Arthashastra, what does the book give us, what is the purpose of learning or reading this book? Arthashastra gives detailed information on Mauryan administration and political condition. Now children, now, when we go, like, as per the exam, the board common exam, uh, sources, as a sources, they can just ask you what are the sources of Mauryan Empire or what are the literary sources they can ask you specifically. So, when we say specifically the literary sources, then you have to talk about the Arthashastra and Indica. Then, in structured question, if they ask literary sources and you have to write, then you have to write all this four points minimum. So, Arthashastra was written by Kautilya who is also known as Vishnu Gupta and Chanakya. Who was he? He was the chief advisor of Chandragupta Maurya. Okay. And he wrote his book in which language? Sanskrit language. So, it can come as a compulsory question in section A. And what does this book gives us? It gives a detailed information on Maurya administration and political condition. So, this that is your four marks question. Okay, the second source. Okay, 
second literary source is indica uh, which in certain books you can see indica spelling as a k a and certain spelling as c a but when we see a lot of books it is c a written okay so it's better you go with the spelling of i n d i c a okay who wrote this book it was written by megasthenes he was ambassador of the greek superior cellists okay so this ambassador from the greek he wrote this megasthenes he left an interesting account of the social political and economic life of india of those times in his book indica so he was another ambassador okay who wrote about the mauryan empire how things were going on during the mauryan reign okay so social life political life and economic life so by reading these books okay both the arthashastra and indica we can know better about the mauryan empire okay children hope i am clear i'll revise once again for you a literary sources under the literary sources we have arthashastra of kautilya known as vishnugupta and chanakya chief ad- and who was he he was a chief advisor of chandragupta maurya the book was written in sanskrit language and what does the book give the book gives a detailed information on administration of political and administration condition of the mauryan empire then the second literary source is indica which was written by a megasthenes okay and what does he wrote in his book he wrote about the social political and economic life of india during those periods okay so after finishing literary sources we are moving on to the archaeological sources which is quite interesting actually edicts what are edicts an edict is an official order or proclamation issued by a person in authority or a sovereign that means the leader the king when he wants to announce some information or he gives an order like uh, any order like nowadays we have locked on the order comes from the superior authority so likewise any order comes on that is an edict okay official order or proclamation issued by a person in authority or sovereign in authority means one who is authority of giving like our prime minister our chief minister who are under authority who gives us the order to to be followed ashoka was the first ruler to communicate with his subjects who are subject subjects of the people through edicts so this man of wisdom the man who had a lot of knowledge he had a good idea great idea whatever order he has to give he gives and he ensures through edict he transfers to all the people of the nation because as you we saw in the previous slide the nation is widespread the mauryan empire so he used all his official order to edicts through edicts to spread his ideas ashoka got his message inscribed okay so that means it's written on stone pillars caves boulders rocks so that people could read them okay so how did he spread his ideas ashoka got his message inscribed on stone pillars caves boulders that's big big stone the rocks so that people could read them okay behind also you can see this is one of the pillar okay we call it stump now this archaeological sources you can just see in india map where and all he erected it because the empire was quite big you can see a kind of a border of india that that shows the uh, complete the mauryan mauryan empire ruling area okay so this square shape shows us the major edicts and the a triangle shows the pillar edicts okay so triangle shows the pillar edict and the square shape shows the rock edict so these edicts were widely spread throughout his empire the edicts are divided into pillar edicts we had seven major rock edicts we had they had 14 then apart from that major we they also had a minor edicts okay so this is a general picture to show you how the empire was spread okay the next 
uh, archaeological evidence is Sanchi Stupa. Sanchi Stupa. What are stupas? So stupas were dome like structures. Okay. Can you see this is a kind of a dome? Okay. Dome like structures built of, of brick and stone over Buddhist relic such as Buddha's hair, teeth or bones. That means all these were under this dome. They were kept as the memory of this Buddha. The Sanchi Supa located near Vidisha, 45 kilometers from Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh was built by Ashoka. So you can see the bigger picture of it. This is the kind of a model of Sanchi Stupa. Actually, there are four gates. One, two, three and four. Okay. One, two, three and four. So these are the four gates. Okay. They have, okay, four gates in four direction. They have carved panels depicting events from the life of Buddha. Okay, Gautam Buddha. You remember the second lesson we learned Jainism and Buddhism in that book. And some tales from Jataka stories. Okay, this also we learned as one of the sources of Buddhism. So, Buddha is represented by symbols like people, tree, lotus or a wheel. So, this walls were all had this kind of a representation where Buddha was shown in the form of a people tree or lotus or a wheel. The pillar are surrounded by capitals which contain sculptures of lion. See, can you see a lion over here? Okay. This is another kind of a drawing. Okay. So, this we need not learn in depth of all those things. Just it's for our knowledge so that to understand what is stupa is. In exam, they don't ask you in such a detailed form what is called what. Just if you have to describe Sanchi Stupa, you can just add all these things. Harmika, okay. This top square shape is called Harmika. And above this is Chhatri. Okay, Chhatri in Hindi, we know kind of an umbrella. So, royal umbrella at the top. Then Vedika. Vedika is like putting fencing all around. Okay, and railings, okay, around. Then Thorna. Thorna are gates. One, two, three and four. And all these four gates are, the, are four cardinal points. That is east, west, north, south. Okay. So those two were the main as per the syllabus. This is additional pillars. This we know the pillars about. Okay. The pillars are the series of columns found throughout North India subcontinent erected by Ashoka. In this pillar also, if you see, this is lotus. Okay. Then there is a drum with four animals and the four lions who take care and who are a kind of a stand for the bravery. Okay. So, King Ashoka became a great follower of Buddhism after the massacre of Kalinga and erected his one of his famous Ashokan pillar in Vishali, which was to mem memorialize the last sermon of Lord Buddha that took place there. There is a life like a figure of a line flawlessly engraved at the top of the filler facing north, believed to be the direction of the Lord Buddha's last voyage. Okay, this is that lion. Okay, in our next video, we'll be saying how Ashoka became the Ashoka the Great and what is this Kalinga war is all about. This Kalinga war is a U turn in the life of the Ashoka. Okay, so today we saw the sources of Mauryan Empire, the literary sources and the archaeological sources. In our next lesson, we will video, we will continue with the political system and the administration of Mauryan Empire. Thank you, children.